What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny. Back in here with one more reaction video. And today, no music on this one, but I promise you, I think you guys are going to love this, especially my young men. We live in a time where masculinity is, like, missing. Most boys are coming up from single-parent homes. And we're told that being a man is toxic. And I think that's the biggest load of crap in the world. So I got a speech from a guy named James Freeman Clark. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Was born in 1810 and passed away in 1888. But he wrote us a, uh, a, a nice little little speech about true manliness. And I think in 2022 is definitely something young men need to hear. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I'm about to drop off some real positive gems to you. And, and I hope you can take these and, and apply them to your life. And they pay huge dividends. So without further ado, let's check out. True manliness. October 5th, 1878. A false notion of manliness leads boys astray. True manliness is humane. It says, we who are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. Its work is to protect those who cannot defend themselves, to stand between the tyrant and the slave, the oppressor and his victim. It is identical in all times with the spirit of shield. And I just want to pause it right there because something that it, I don't know why, it seems like we've forgotten that for slavery to end, it took strong black men and it took strong white men. A lot of white men died for me, for my freedom in the Civil War, just as a lot of black men did. So I'll never disrespect my elders. But I understand that the men before me, they left the road path that I got to step up and defend whatever is coming my way, because that's what they did back in the day. Embrace the manliness inside of you. Chivalry, which led the good knights to wander in search of robbers, giants, and tyrannical lords, those who oppressed the poor and robbed helpless women and orphans of their rights. There are no tyrant barons now, but the spirit of tyranny and cruelty is still to be found. The good knight today is he who provides help for the blind. <laughs> The deaf and dumb, the insane, who defends animals from being cruelly treated, rescues little children from bad usage, yes, sir. and seeks to give working women their rights. He protects all these sufferers from that false manliness, which is brutal to the weak. False manliness, which is destroying the world right now, currently. The true knights today are those who organize to prevent cruelty or to enforce laws against those who, for a little gain, make men drunkards. The giants and dragons today are those cruelties and brutalities which use their power to ill treat those who are at their mercy. True manliness is tender and loving. False manliness, cold and hard, cynical and contemptuous. The bravest and most heroic souls are usually the most loving. Garibaldi, Kosuth, Mazzini, the heroes of our times. Luther, who never feared the face of man, Gustavus, Aldolphus, and William of Orange are examples of this union of courage and tenderness. Bold. All of these are men that we need to be taught, out, taught about in school. And I say that because, as Thomas Sowell has said, they're, they're erasing the accomplishments of, of white men out of history. Ralph Waldo Emerson doesn't care that I study his, his work. 
Napoleon Hill doesn't care. Bob Proctor doesn't care. James F. Clark doesn't care. He's not, he's not here to say, hey, that black man can't learn from me. No man is your friend. No man is your enemy. Every man is your teacher. Once you grab that concept of life, you'll back up a little bit. Your emotions don't need to be involved in every decision. Just observe and pay attention. Old as lions in the defense of the right, such men in their homes and their private life have a womanly gentleness. False manliness is unfeeling, with no kindly sympathies, rude and rough and overbearing. True manliness is temperate, it is moderate, it exercises self-control. Self-discipline is freedom. It is capable of self-denial and renunciation. And self-denial is really big to talk about in a time of OnlyFans when there's pornography everywhere for young boys, where you can go on Twinder, Tinder, Bumble, Instagram, you name it, and you got women everywhere. Man, learn that Women and sleeping with a bunch of women will never make you feel better. You will come away extremely empty. I'm speaking from experience. By the time I was 22, I've, I've had, I had more women than the average man will ever have in their life. I didn't feel good about myself. But when I got connected spiritually with myself and figured out who I am and started taking better care of myself, my skin got better. I, I walked around with a better glow. I'm uplifted. So I'm, I'm challenging all men. Learn self-control. And learn self-denial. You know, they say a lot of stuff that's sweet in the mouth turns sour in the belly. I got baby mamas because I was a young man who didn't understand the long-term effects of just recklessly having sex. If I can do anything to young men, and that's what I really want to do is, is pay it for it, then I have to give this wisdom that, that self-control and self-discipline is freedom. You are extremely hard to control when you take care of yourself. Drink water, take vitamins. Disconnect from the fast food, disconnect from the porn, find you a purpose and stick to that purpose and you will reap the abundance of benefits. Don't get distracted by all the things in this world, young men. You have greatness inside of you. All of us are born geniuses. And if you don't have a father, if you don't have an uncle, if you don't have some older man that's there to motivate you or that you can look up to or inspire you, reach out to me, man. I, I promise you I want all young men to have a, a super mega awesome abundant life. False manliness is self-willed and self-indulgent. And I had never heard of James F. Clark before today, but this was good. In a time where 80% of young black children are growing up in single mother homes, 37% of young white children are growing up in single parent homes. Man, we need fathers. And that's not n knocking mothers because I grew up in a two parent home with my mom and my dad. But my mother couldn't have made me the man I am today. She did the best job she could, but she couldn't make me who I am. Me standing outside watching my daddy change breaks, me just having just random conversations just with my daddy, just being around men, just learning manly things. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. I got four sons myself. Man, when I say they are little replicas of me, every little thing I do is crazy. And I couldn't imagine them without me. Though two of them have had to be without me. Like I said, I'm human. I got baby mamas. I had kids that was moved out of town and moved out. Of, and my, my youngest sons, they went from Kansas City, Kansas City to Memphis to Texas. And now they finally with daddy. But I couldn't imagine being a young man in this world without a father, without somebody to guide me. If you're a young black boy, you're told you're going to get shot by the cops and you can't be anything. If you're a young white boy, you're told that you're a toxic, straight, white, male, masculine. And the only way the world wants to accept you is if you decide to put on a dress and not embrace your, your, your masculinity, your manliness. I can't get with that. Not, not, peak, not knocking anyone's lifestyle, but man, we are warriors. And I need all young men, black, white, yellow, whatever color you are, embrace the, the warrior inside of you. Embrace the Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, <laughs> embrace that, the, the rock, the Booker T, all of these great men. You know, we all can do anything. Every little thing you see around you, 
every material thing in this world first started as an idea and then someone manifested it. And you got that same power inside of you. So figure out what you want to accomplish in life. Sit down, make a plan, write it down. Make the vision plain, as the Bible said. The Bible also says you have not because you ask not. So you don't have what you want in life because you ain't never sat down and asked for it. Have you? Write down what you want. Get a pen, get a piece of paper, and write down what you want in life, young man. And then every day ask yourself, how do I get one step closer to that? And just keep going. Try for 30 days. And try for another 30. And try for another 30. And watch what happens to your life. You are great. You are talented. You are special. You can do anything. You can accomplish anything. There are no limits in life besides the limits you set on yourself. So with that being said, go do something super crazy in this world. The way we talk about Frederick Douglass still, we're going to talk about Johnny in 200 years. And whoever's watching this video, man, you have the power to leave a crazy legacy behind. Go be awesome. We out. Peace. Oh, child.